Good morning, and welcome to worship at Trinity United Church of Christ on Sunday, October 18th, 2020. This video service is something that we are going to produce every Sunday. As long as Stark County is red or purple on the COVID spread scale, according to the Ohio Department of Health, we are going to have a parking lot service until it gets freezing, freezing cold. <laughs> so who knows exactly when that will be, but at least we're hoping through Thanksgiving to have a parking lot service out there for those who are interested, willing to come. If we are not red, if we are orange or yellow, we will worship here in the sanctuary. But no matter where we're worshiping on Sunday, we will be producing a video that you can watch and participate in and worship through at home. So that's what we have this morning. That's the major announcements at this point. We are looking forward to worshiping whatever ways that we can at Trinity during this pandemic. Now, let us enter into the spirit of worship with prayer. Gracious Lord, no matter where we are gathered, how spread apart we may be, we know that we are joined together through you, our Lord and Savior, who unites us. May we enter into the spirit of worship this day, and may we be blessed by the scriptures, by the reading of the word, the preaching, the music. May all of this enliven our spiritual faith and give us sustenance for the week ahead. Amen. I will sing praise, I will lift my voice, I will sing praise, have made my choice. I will sing praise in all I do. I will sing praise to you. I will sing praise. I will lift my voice. I will sing praise. I've made my choice. I will sing praise in all I do. I will sing praise to you. No matter the storms that come my way, no matter the trials I may face, you promise that you This is Ashley Miltner, the Christian Ed Director at Trinity United Church of Christ. Today, I just wanted to read you the Bible verses for this weekend and talk to you guys a little bit about what does that mean. So I'm going to start with Psalms chapter 
37, verses 3 through 9. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live in the land and enjoy its food. Find your delight in the Lord. Then he will give you everything your heart really wants. Commit your life to the Lord. Here is what he will do for you if you trust in him. He will make the reward for your godly life shine like the dawn. He will make the proof of your honest life shine like the sun at noon. In this verse, Psalm chapter 3 through 6, we learn that God wants us to let our light shine. Have you ever heard anyone say, be the light in the world? That means all of your goodness, all of your love, and all of your compassion are your light that you can shine upon the world. When it comes to making choices, you have a choice of how to be. What kind of person are you going to be in this world? And every little thing that you do adds up to that. The way that you treat others with kindness or respect, that is the goodness that you have that you can bring to the world. A reading from the book of Psalms, selected verses from chapter 37. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the night, and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only leads to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Our steps are made firm by the Lord when he delights in our way. Though we stumble, we shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds us by the hand. Depart from evil and do good, so you shall abide forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his faithful ones. The righteous shall be kept safe forever, but the children of the wicked shall be cut off. Mark the blameless and behold the upright, for there is posterity for the peaceable. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their refuge in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please join me in a spirit of prayer? Gracious Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This Sunday, we are continuing our series entitled The Gospel According to Mr. Rogers. This is the third sermon in the series. So I want to begin with some quotes from a wonderful book about the faith of Mr. Rogers. All that matters are your motives. God will lead the way. You know that. This is a quote from a letter that Fred Rogers wrote to the author of the book, The Simple Faith of Mr. Rogers. Her name is Amy Hollingsworth. She is an author and psychology professor, and she interviewed Mr. Rogers for a news story in 1996, and the two became friends until Fred's death in 2003. Over those eight years, Mr. Rogers wrote her many letters expressing his faith. The interview he gave her in 1996 was the first time he had spoken about his faith on television, despite having been on television, on the air, in one way or another since 1951. This interview 
The letters they shared back and forth became the basis for her wonderful book, The Simple Faith of Mr. Rogers. In their correspondence, Mr. Rogers often talked about the way we should act as human beings, as a community, as neighbors. He talked about the way we should behave as Christians, even though he didn't always explicitly say that. And in doing so, he often lifted up those his mother called the helpers. To see people who will notice a need in the world and then do something about it. And rather than view it with despair, they view it with hope to me that is such an enormous gift in this life. Those are my heroes, Fred Rogers said. You know, he continued, there are so many people who say, well, that's not my kid, that's not my school, that's not my community, why should I care? But then, then there are those who say, well, that is my school, that is my kid, that is my community, even if it was not the community that they lived in. Those are the people that are my heroes, he said. Fred Rogers' mother had always called those people the helpers. When he was a boy and was frightened by something in the news that he heard, his mother would say, look, look for the helpers. You will find these people who are helping always, no matter what. And Fred did look for the helpers. Those who notice a need in the world and who do something about it. They became his heroes, following the way Jesus laid out famously in Matthew 25. When he went on and on about what we need to do for the least of these and how when we do for the least of these, we are actually doing it unto him. Two helpers that Fred Rogers admired were Henry Nowen, one of my personal heroes, and William Wasson. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me, it says in Matthew 25. Henry Nowen is one of the great Christian thinkers and prolific writers who taught at Harvard but resigned to become a pastor to the disabled at the La Arche community in Toronto, Canada. Among Henry's responsibilities were bathing, shaving, dressing, feeding a severely disabled man named Adam. In the end, Henry noted it was Adam who taught him the greatest lesson, not the other way around. This is why Mr. Rogers called Henry Nowen one of my revered people in this life, a true hero. I was a stranger, and you let me in. Matthew 25 continues. The other helper, William Wasson, started a ministry for our little brothers and sisters in Mexico. Amy Hollingsworth wrote of how Fred Rogers spoke to her about this helper hero. He went to Mexico 40 years ago to die, Mr. Rogers said. He was very ill, but obviously he didn't die. He was in a little parish there, and there were two kids who were stealing from the church's poor box, and those kids were taken to jail. And William Wasson went to the jail and said, do you think I could take care of those kids at my home? Now the jail was only too happy to get rid of them, and they said, sure, take them off our hands. So he took them home. And two days later, the folks at the jail called him again and said, we got two more. And he said, send them over. Well, in a matter of months, he had about 17 kids. And he had to move to bigger quarters. He adopted them all. He legally adopted all of those kids. In the last 25 years, he has adopted about 6,000 children. They have their own schools, and many of them now are second generation. They have come back to help work with the new pequeños, the little ones who are coming in. Fred Rogers continues when he says, Father Wasson went to Mexico to die, but instead 
discovered a reason to live. This echoes the words from our psalm today. Trust in the Lord and do good so you will live in the land and enjoy security and prosperity. You see, Mr. Rogers' faith is about following the way of Jesus, following a path of goodness, kindness, and helping others. The path of a Christian is a path that leads to lifting others up, saying and doing positive things to encourage rather than to tear down, belittle, discourage, or insult. This is the deep wisdom and lessons of Mr. Rogers, despite them sometimes seeming too simplistic or not really very serious. They were, in fact, very serious, very complex, and deeply rooted in the gospel. Often in this world, the hardest things are the ones that seem simplest. The youth activity director at the church that my wife Sarah and I served in Memphis, Lindenwood Christian Church, used to take great joy out of mocking me and my namby-pamby Christianity, as he loved to call it. You see, he felt that I preached too much about love and kindness, and he was looking for fire and judgment. He wanted me to tell the teenagers what sinners they were because he thought, he thought, this was the most important message from Jesus. But the funny thing is, the funny thing is, it is really easy to point fingers, to blame, and to shame, and to use fear to get your way. It is simple, easy, and I dare say lazy to choose the path of ridicule and division to espouse your faith. It is far more difficult to hold true to the tenets of loving our neighbors as ourselves and praying for our enemies, turning the other cheek, giving our cloaks after our coat has been stolen, and forgiving seven times seventy. In Matthew 18, it says this, Then Peter came up to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Or for those mathematically challenged like myself, 490 times. So this means, according to Jesus, that we should forgive anyone who offends us almost 500 times in our lives. Wow, that's a hard pill to swallow. But that is what Jesus calls up to us to do if we want to follow him. There are plenty of other people we can follow in this world who call us to judgment, who encourage us to take revenge upon others, to hit back harder, to hold grudges, and not to forgive. But not Jesus. So what way shall we follow? The easy path of revenge or the hard path of forgiveness? This is the question before us as Christians. This is not namby-pamby religion. This is hard work. If it were easy, we would not be in the mess that we are in this world. If this were easy, Mr. Rogers would not have been so unique for doing so, for following the true path of gentleness, kindness, forgiveness, and Christ. He would have been a dime a dozen if this were easy. This way, following the way of Christ is hard work. It is a difficult task. Trust in the Lord and do good. So you will live in the land and enjoy security. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Depart from evil and do good. These words from Psalm 37 sound like they could have been wisdom dispensed by Mr. Rogers himself. As a trained pastor, he was familiar with these scriptures, and I am sure it was in his mind when he was producing Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Much like Mr. Rogers, the narrator of Psalm 37 is a venerable elder who having seen much in his life, urges those who have less experience not to be agitated at the apparent success of the wicked, nor be envious of wrongdoers. Rather than rage against the wicked, 
The psalmist urges action of another sort. Indeed, he directs the listener to act, and to act with a series of active verbs. Listen to these verses. In verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good, for that leads to land and security. In verse 4, take delight in the Lord, for the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. In verse 5, commit your way and trust the Lord, for the Lord will act and vindicate. We could choose the path of anger, revenge, rage, resentment, and grudges, but that, that, my friends, would not be the path of Christ. Can we truly be expected to take these words from the psalm seriously? That the wicked will be cut off, or that the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that their day of coming? Yes, I believe we can. And, indeed, this world, this message, may be precisely what we need to hear. The psalmist acknowledges that the wicked may have the upper hand right now. Evildoers do prosper. And many of them are shamelessly brazen in their schemes to plot against those who trust in the Lord, regarding them as life's losers. But the psalmist reminds us that God will not be mocked, that God's justice will not be mocked. God's eye is upon those who hunger and thirst now, those in need, those whom the helpers can help. And God's justice will arrive sooner or later. The Psalms' last two verses affirm this hope. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their refuge in the time of trouble. The Lord helps and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. If we take refuge in the Lord, if we take refuge by following the path of Christ towards kindness, towards forgiveness, towards all of the things that Mr. Rogers preached, those things that seem perhaps to the outside like namby-pamby simple religion, but which we know is really difficult, is the hard path of Christ. If we follow that, then we shall be richly rewarded. And I know that we shall make the world a better place. If we can be those helpers, we can do something in this world, here and now, to make it better. Amen. And now is the time in our service online when we ask you to continue to support the ministries and the mission at Trinity United Church of Christ. We have been able to survive as a church, to thrive as a community in faith because of your donations over these past seven months of difficulty, social distancing, and things not being even close to the way we would like them to be. So we ask you to continue, please, now. If you can donate, click on the link on your screen. Continue to send your offerings and your tithes into the church. Drop them off at the secure drop box out front. Any way that you can to help us, your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you. May the Lord bless you all and keep you safe in this time. May you feel rejuvenated, renewed, and inspired by this worship service. May it inform your actions as people of faith moving forward. May you recognize that sometimes the most simple-sounding faith is the hardest to live out. May you work tirelessly every day to follow the path of Christ and to do that hard work for this world and beyond. Amen.